Okay, let's go back to 18 then. <coughs> Jim Gallagher, Jr., playing with Sluman. Gallagher started the day even. He's now 11 over. Had a round of 81 today. Come on, man, please. Lots of 80. So that's seven players in a row that have shot 80 or over the last seven players that have played up here. That will not be the case for Jess Luman. If he makes this, it'll be 71, one under par, classic round under these conditions. You know, Jim, when he finished second at AT&T, he holed a crucial putt on the last hole on top of Mark O'Meara. The guy has an unbelievable amount of courage and guts, and uh, he's uh, played a great round today. Yes, sir. Take a little credit for that one, Jeff. Interesting, he's only won one tournament on tour, and that was a major. And here he is playing so magnificently again in a major championship. That's just terrific. <laughs> Tom Price making his birdie on 14. He goes to five under. But still has a four-stroke lead because of Sluman's birdie on 18. So Jeff Sluman appears to be one of those guys that you have to admire so much to whom the major championships are vitally important. They're not just another golf tournament. I seem to remember a guy named Nicholas who felt that way. Oh. Wisdom tried to hit a driver out of the rough, but it didn't get up in the air. It's just short of the bunker, just on the left edge of the fairway. Now, Tom Kite has moved over to 15. We're going to take a look at that hole, Jack. Tees it up. 397 yard dog leg left. Uh, wind's blowing left to right. The out of bounds comes into play under these wind conditions, uh, Jim. There's a tree there on the left that we're just passing that you just have to graze and play a little hook to get the ball down the fairway. Plenty of room left, although there's very heavy left, rough left. Uh, Tom will probably probably play a three wooder driver and hook it around there, uh, leaving himself with probably a seven or an eight iron to the green. Green's open in the front. Uh, let's see what he's got on his hands. He's got the three wood, Jack. He wants to play the club with a little bit of loft, and make it easier for him to hook it. He knows that that wind will rush the ball away to the right if he doesn't catch it properly. Well, he pulled it and hooked it also, but it did clear the tree. Yeah. Well, he knew where his big problems were. The big problems were right. He hit it right underneath that tree, didn't he? It went right under the tree. You're exactly right. Pretty close to it. Oh, yeah. that's Many of balls hit that tree and dropped in that branca right there in front of the tee. Look at the leaderboard. Have a look at the trophy. It's not ready to be awarded yet. This, by the way, must tell you the truth, is not the real trophy. The real one never leaves Golf House of the United States Golf Association there, headquarters. This is a replica made a few years ago. Cost 10,000 bucks, made by a great silversmith in London. And just to be sure, the USGA has made it minutely smaller, 7-8 size, so it can't be a counterfeit. We'll return with more golf action from the 1992 U.S. Open after this message and a word from our ABC station. Looking down from the Goodyear Blimp Eagle, which has been providing these magnificent shots all afternoon. There it is with this new paint job and everything. Kind of frustrating for the blimp. All week, the clouds were, were low and we couldn't get any pictures at all from us there. But look at that sky today. It just cleared, well, you know, after the, the final round had started today. Just in the nick of time to, to let us show you Pebble Beach at its very best. There's Jeff Sluman, who has just shot 71 who is the leader of those who have finished. However, he trails Tom Kite by four. <laughs> Father's Day. Here's a father of four, including twins, Tom Kite. He took a couple weeks or week off very recently to take his kids 
wife, his whole family to Baltimore for the U.S. gymnastics trials because one of his little girls, a gymnast, he wanted her, her to have a chance to see it. And while he was there, he told several people, he said, if you want to make a good bet on the open, bet on me. I think I'm ready this time. Tom's giving him the open, open side of the green to play into. He didn't have a very good lie here. 139 yards, but a great play. Yeah. Just down in front. I'm sure he'll be happy with that, Mark. What? 14, Ian Woosnam. Playing it out. Now, he's in a tie for fourth place with Nikki Price, who shot 71 today, and Gil Morgan. Little woozy, six over on today's round. Morgan, seven over. And now here's Morgan. On the 17th tee, Payne Stewart, the defending champion, but look at that. He's 10 over for this championship now. He's 9 over for the day. How do you like us now, Payne? Short right um, of the hourglass shaped green of 17 is Payne Stewart. And now. Speaking of Jeff Sluman, second on the board there. Here he is with Brent Musburger. Jim, thank you very much. Uh, safely in at one under. Uh, what a test that was for everybody out there today, Jeff. Yeah, it really was, Brent. It was uh, as hard a conditions as I've ever played under. And uh, I was just fortunate enough today to, to make the six and eight footers. That you, you knew you were going to have a lot of them today for pars. Nice Father's Day gift for George. I know he first trip here, right, to Pebble Beach. Got to see his son uh, sit here now. You knocked Colin Montgomery out. No chance. The title will stay in the United States. Tell me what you heard Jack Nicklaus say on television yesterday that helped you. Well, I got over, uh, hit it over the green on 14 in the chipping area that they put in. And I uh, wasn't quite sure uh, exactly how to play it. And I saw Tom Watson earlier in the week had a beautiful chip. But uh, I heard Jack say that he thought the only way to play the shot was to putt it. And, and uh took out the putter and knocked it up there about six feet and made the par. Exactly, and the wind was just absolutely treacherous. You're sitting here now at, uh, at minus one, but uh, Tom Kite seems to have it well in hand, doesn't he? Yeah, Tom, uh, Tom knows how to win tournaments and finish them off, but uh, you know he's got some little golf left, and we'll just sit here and watch and see what happens. Before we do that, here's your third shot at 18. You came in and asked me where it hit, <laughs> and why don't you take a look at it? Tell us about it. Well, I think I had 119 yards, and obviously a crosswind left to right, and I just wanted to hit a solid 9-iron and kind of turn it into the wind and sort of hold it off straight, and it turned out pretty good. Jeff, congratulations. Great U.S. Open. Back we go to Jim and Jack. Thanks. I see it pays to listen to the Masters. Took Jack Nicklaus's advice and see where he is now. I remember you saying that yesterday. Well, he, he, he did a little bit more than take my advice. He went ahead and played some great <laughs> golf. I can't take much credit for that. He gets all the credit for that. Tom Kite is unshakable. That for the par to stay at five under. Four strokes ahead. He'll be with three holes to play. Now. Look at the rocks and the waters of the ocean below. Kite by four over Sluman, by five over Colin Montgomery, who shot 70 today. Sluman shot 71. Ian Woosnam, you saw him there with Gil Morgan and the others. Billy Andrade came in at four over. A lot of these people moved up the leaderboard as other people fell down. John Cook there and Mark McCumber. Couples, Red Couples, free tournament favorite. Couldn't do it this time. Mark Brooks is right in it early today. and, and He's uh, six over now, at the 14 holes. 
Andy Dillard, who was the big crowd favorite all week long, did himself proud. Ended up six over in the U.S. Open on his first try. Trey Tyner there shot uh, 70 today. So he buys Steros. Craig Statler at seven over. Azinger really made a challenge early today, and then it all came apart. All these at eight over that you see, Kalkabeki and Craig Parry, and Forrest Brand from Sweden, Russ Cochran, the left-hander, Fred Funk, Maryland, so-called Canadian, Nulty, Ray Floyd. Gee, Floyd had a tough day after starting off with birdie birdie in the first two holes. It was a tough day. It was a tough day for a lot of fellas, Jim, as you're looking. Yes. <laughs> to pick any name, there's Hale Irwin, three-time former champion, ended up 10 over. Scott Simpson, who can play the U.S. Open most times as well as anybody. Harold Dunham, former helicopter pilot, his first year as a pro at age 30. Pretty good finish. There they are on a very tough afternoon at Pebble Beach. Nick Faldo here is four over. For the championship, six over for the day. He's on 16th hole. Well, Jim, it's been a very long day for him. He hasn't even flirted with making a putt until just then. <laughs> very long day and a very long putt. What is this, the new funny Faldo we've got this year? The other day he was climbing a tree and saying, where is Jane? He was Tarzan. Now he gives us a little sachet up to the hole. But I think that was more a move of frustration than anything else. Tom Kite. All right. Another par. Remains at five under. When you're just kind of playing out the string as Faldo is doing today in a championship like this, Jack, is it even more difficult than usual to maintain your concentration? Well, I think at this point, Jim, uh, I think... Uh, to have a little fun with it is probably about the only thing you can have. I remember the day that I shot 45 <laughs> the back nine here at Pebble Beach in, in the tournament, and I was basically one shot out of the lead. Yeah, All you could do was laugh. I mean, it was really, it got to a certain point where it got laughable, and so <laughs> in the game of golf, you know, it's supposed to be fun, and once you get beyond a certain point, you, yeah, you just, maybe you just make it fun for yourself. That's all you can do, huh? There's Woozy. That was from 155 out of a pretty good lie in the rough. Well, in the 15th hole. <coughs> Pretty good shot. Whoops, whoops, whoops. I'll tell you, one fellow's having a lot of fun right now is Tom Kite. Oh, boy. Begins to be fun at this point. Uh, Payne Stewart. Second shot on 18. It's not like last year. He was coming up 18 to be the champion. Oh, oh. He might be dead behind that tree. Yeah, he may be able to get by. What do you think? I don't really think Payne really cares too much about this point. What he did was just trying to have some fun and see if he could knock it on the green and just exactly what we're talking about with Faldo a second ago. Yeah. Okay. Now, Tom Kite on 16. Par 4. Okay. The green nestled among the trees. He may be the only serious golfer left on the golf course right now, Jim. Yes. Kite headed toward the right hand side. Oops. Caught the rough. Caught the rough out there, Mark. I think he'll play safe from there though. He'll play it smart. Just lay it up. Okay, we'll return with more golf action from the 1992 U.S. Open. Ronald Reagan came by to film his 1938 epic, Sergeant Murphy. When we were introduced to the teenage Elizabeth Taylor in National Velvet, the horse scenes were shot on the Pebble Beach polo field. This week, that polo field, by the way, is the U.S. Open practice range. Next Sunday on ABC Sports, the race for the IndyCar Championship continues. The points leader is Bobby Rahal. He and the defending champ, Michael Andretti, lead the pack of world-class drivers on the one-mile oval outside of Milwaukee. An old traditional race, the Miller Genuine Draft 200, live next Sunday on ABC Sports. And live at Pebble Beach, here is the leader in the U.S. Open Championship, Tom Kite of Texas.